All right, guys, welcome back. Push garden it's so uh, no metal detecting today. We have a uh, a Chinese kit, and I believe it is a function generator. We'll take it out of the package. See what we have. Like it, it comes with a enclosure. Nice. Some instructions. Excellent. Instructions are in English. That's always a, a plus. Very good. Nice looking um, printed circuit board. And assorted parts. Let me get these arranged and I will show you what we have. All right, so let's do a, a quick poke through of the general items that we have here. We have uh, three potentiometers, um, there's two 50k potentiometers and a 100k, uh, three elect electrolytic capacitors, and we've got uh, five other assorted non-polarized capacitors here, a couple of jumpers, a, a header, um, five resistors, we have our knobs, we have our barrel jack connector, and we've got some pin headers. And the star of the show really is this IC chip here. And that is, upon closer inspection, a uh, 2206 CP which through looking it up on Google, it is a monolithic function generator IC capable of producing high quality sine, square, triangle, ramp, and pulse waveforms. High stability and accuracy. And it works over a range of 0 0.01 hertz to more than one megahertz. So this looks like a promising little kit. So why don't I get to soldering, and uh, I'll touch base as I go. All right, guys. So initially, I wasn't going to show any soldering, but uh, as you can see, I am going to show some soldering. And we're just going to solder these, uh, the dip socket, for the IC. And we'll solder the, uh, the barrel connector for the power supply. And I think that should be enough. Just a little taste, right? I kind of, I, I like to watch soldering. I know it's not everybody's thing, but I find it uh, therapeutic. And Almost done with the dip socket, not doing horribly. Okay, this is going to take a little bit more. I think I might need to change the tip. We will try it. Hopefully, I don't. Uh, 
pull my solder reel off its mount. Almost there, guys. That one's done. Last one. Reposition this, not getting enough heat. And that's good. And that's it for the soldering. We'll be back. All right, just a little progress shot. Uh, the three pots are installed. I have the various headers, the barrel jack, and the dip socket. So really all that's left are the capacitors and, and the resistors. And then we'll hook this up to the oscilloscope and fingers crossed we'll have uh, some good results. So I always like to check my components. So I have my, my trusty uh, uh, component checker here. And the electro electrolytic capacitor supposedly is 100 microfarad. So let's see what uh, the component tester says it is in fact oh not too bad not bad at all well within tolerance all right just, just a progress shot um, all the components soldered placed on the board we have the chip inserted in the dip socket and uh, always be careful to align the chip up with the indent of the socket right so you, you make sure that the numbering is correct see the indent here and perhaps you can see the indent in the socket as well as the silk screen on the board so i won't uh, torture you with putting together the plastic enclosure that tends to be kind of tedious i'll show you what it looks like when i have that all done Okay, so I've thought better of what I said about not showing the case installation. We'll go through, run through it really quickly. So you can see here on the bottom, we've got the, the short machine screws. What you do is you, you thread the four nuts onto each one, and those are a standoff, right? They're not to actually secure, they're just a standoff so that you're at the appropriate distance off the bottom of the piece of uh, Perspex. All right, and so they just sit in those four holes like that. And really, that's the most complicated part of this whole endeavor, if you could even call it complicated. And then the rest of it is just like a little basic puzzle. Okay, and I think we will cut here and I'll show you when it's complete. So here we are complete. Um, they were kind enough to include a, a spare nut. Just take note that the, the four corner uh, machine screws don't have associated nuts that go with them. They thread directly into the plexier perspex. Okay. So be very careful. You have a, about a, a two thread, um, two thread, threads worth of meat in the plastic. So don't get too adventurous or else you'll strip it. So next we'll hook this up to the oscilloscope and see what the waveforms look like. Okay, let's do a, a quick rundown if I can hold this thing in place of uh, the etchings that, that are on the case here. And it, it gives you the ranges and what type of waves. So you see here we have uh, two possible jumper positions. Um, you can choose sine or triangle, right? And here are the different um, frequencies. One to 10 hertz, 10, to 
think it's a hundred. Hard for me to see here. A uh, hundred hertz to three kilohertz, three kilohertz to sixty-five kilohertz, and sixty-five kilohertz to one megahertz. And then over here on this header, you have ground, square, and triangle sign. Here you have amplitude adjustment for the sine wave and coarse and fine frequency adjustments. So we'll run through a couple of those and I'll show you what it looks like on the oscilloscope. Okay, so on the screen we are maxed out. We're 1.2 megahertz and we're showing a triangle wave and a square wave and let's back this off substantially and this is the course adjustment you can see I'll turn the fine adjustment we can vary the amplitude you can see at at the higher voltage we have clipping at the top of the wave so I, I think it's the the most you can do is six volts in amplitude the square wave you cannot change the amplitude just the sign and the triangle um, let me change the frequency here let's go down to the bottom one to ten um, Hit the auto set and see what we come up with. That's not very exciting. All right, here we go. That's more like it. Uh, we're at a much greater time base, and you can see what we have. Let's change this, we'll go to 3K. and dial it in here so I mean n not too bad it's it's serviceable I'm not going to prolong this anymore you can see the the general functionality of this um, I'll just switch over to sign just give you a, a look at that and I think it's 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 pretty good. It's not a bad kit. It works and I think it was well under $10. So thanks for joining me guys and we will continue on with learning and showing these kits and hopefully another pulse induction video coming soon. Thanks.